there no longer is an NSLS, the North <laughs> Suburban Library System. There no longer are most of these systems. So, and all of this information, therefore, is dated in that way. Um, there's, the, there's no telling until they do an update of this how much other information in it might also have changed. Okay. It's useful to be aware of it, but some of it's ancient history um, that isn't even present anymore. So, you know, it's, it's just a requirement to meet our per capita grant requirements. So that's one of the beauties if you ever get the opportunity to come to the Illinois Library Association trustee meeting. It happens every year and you get some more updates there. Can I just ask, yeah. uh, is it, it's certainly not a statutory requirement, is it an administrative rule that, do they delineate specifically this particular document? So does the Secretary of State need to update that grant agreement or the administrative rules? The per capita grants right. are related to whether we've met these requirements. I understand. My question is, are the requirements in, and you can ask me, you can answer offline if you'd like to look it up, but whether it's by administrative rule or whether it's pursuant to the grant agreement with the Secretary of State. And who, I'd like to know who has to clean this up. Okay, so he will yeah. follow it up. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I'll Thank you. you know. will follow up on Probably that. the state of the, the staff of the Illinois State Library would have that mm -hmm. responsibility. The Secretary of State. Because they published it. They are a division of the Secretary of State. Right. But no one in the Secretary of State's office so outside this Illinois State Library will even know what it is. <laughs> Okay. So read, read through it, be familiar yeah. with it. But the basic principles stand, and I think it's sure. important to know right. it as a right. point of Much reference. of it remains truly factual, and to Fina's question, if you would like to discuss this with me personally, I, I, I live here, so that's <laughs> fine. I'm happy to discuss these things. Um, the appendices, it's true, may be a bit dated, but a lot of the content is still entirely relevant today. Okay. Now for your director's report. Um, did you want to talk about um, oh. item A under? <laughs> okay. Boom. And we have no update. Okay. We, uh, Anthony and I met to discuss the retreat that we've been talking about with an executive from the Executive Service Corps, John Ingman. And what we decided that might be based on the interviews I've had with you all and just talking in terms of he does a lot of board work is to have it sometimes in January or February, Saturday, half day. What the focus will, would be would be briefly do some type of visioning as to where you see the library going, because I know not much is to get your input, but that won't be the crux of it. The other thing that he will focus on is key points of an effective board, best practices, roles and responsibilities of the board and the board culture. And also at that time, Ron was going to do a one-hour parliamentary procedure, and it might be done at that time or prior to that meeting. And he was also going to observe a couple of our board meetings and perhaps one of our committee meetings. Finance probably being a good one. And then the pre-work might be a board self-assessment to give to him so that he has a better sense of what we, where we're going and where we're not going. Okay, so more information to come, but just to let you know that's what's on, what's in process. Any questions? Will you give us a variety of dates that are possible? Oh, they would have to, to also, we have to figure out what their dates are, that they can do it too. Yeah. Correct. And so, one of the things yeah, is, in the doodle poll, does that work for you all? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was also being thought of to have it off-site. But in the Wilmette community. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Okay. All right. So on to the director's report. That's behind tab seven. Um, I've got a ten pager this month. I'm not yeah. going to. I'm not going to go verbatim, but I'll, I'll give you some of the highlights. Um, September is always National Library Card Sign Up Month, and we engaged in a lot of activities uh, this past September. Um, we registered patrons for cards um, off-site. Um, we had um, uh, programs um, both on our lawn and at Batman Park. Um, we had four events that were visited by 48 um, patrons. Um, they got promotional items. Uh, they, 
Uh, they posed for photos with our oversized library card. That was a big part of our social media campaign in September. Um, and uh, we also had um, several uh, French market events, and um, Trustee Wolf attended uh, one of those. Um, did you bike over? Yes, I did. Yes. <laughs> you you, were, you took Professor Paul? Yes, yeah, Professor Paul and I went over there, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> So we feel, we feel um, that uh, our program was successful again this, this past September. Um, also in September, we uh, launched our new story for the Story Walk at Batman Park. Um, so there's a little bit of information up there about um, what the basis of the Story Walk is. And um, we'll be refreshing that story periodically throughout the year. Um, I did send this information via email, but I wanted to share it again with you here in the meeting. Um, the final construction item of the uh, 2019 outdoor renovation project was the installation of the custom wood bench that comprises the back half of the monument sign. Uh, that was installed um, on October 7th, and um, that has quickly become a popular destination mm -hmm. for our patrons. Um, at any given point in the day, as Sarah Beth was even indicating earlier, um, patrons are really taking advantage of all the additional seating options that we have out there. Uh, when I went to go out and snap a picture to share with you all um, about that, I had patrons on the bench um, uh, and uh, they were quite comfortable and so I, I didn't get their permission to, to share their photo, but um, uh, it was, it, you know, that's just, uh, it just reinforces how popular that, that bench is and it really is beautiful. Um, one of our facilities associates, Keith, went around um, recently in the last couple weeks and he applied uh, a winterizing oil to um, all the wood surfaces out there to help preserve them over the winter and uh, ensure their beauty. So uh, the, the large bench was also part of that process. Um, so once that, once that installation was complete, when, when that bench was completed, that was the final construction item of the project and therefore we felt comfortable with reporting what the final budgetary figures were um, for the project. So uh, back in February when we voted on this project um, we had a not to exceed of 875,000. Um, we estimated after we received all of our bids on the project that the project total would be $858,000. And in October, when we reviewed all of our final costs for the project, um, the final bills came in at 777,000 and change, um, which was a difference of just over $80,000. So we, we were $80,000 under what our estimate was and almost $100,000 under what um, our not to exceed was. Um, we didn't touch our construction contingency at all. Um, I credit that to uh, Shales McNutt Construction and their management of the project. They did a really great job um, getting us uh, skilled trades to work with us and um, the daily management of the project helped to control costs. Um, further, even though that we added um, additional concrete and bluestone, um, as well as the unplanned for um, situation with the ventilation of the snow melt boiler, we saved an additional $16,000 over what we were estimating our cost to be. So. Um, I'm very satisfied with um, the, the budget on this project and the planning that um, uh, the board and uh, Shales McNutt Construction did for us. Um, and I think you all should feel pretty, pretty proud of how you were able to manage the expenses on this project. So I appreciate your support with that. Will we send a note like that to Shales McNutt? Um, or have we? Yes. I have. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Any questions about that element of the outdoor renovation? Of course, there is there is one remaining piece, and I've, I've mentioned this before, but just for everyone's benefit, um, there's a one-year warranty on all of the plantings that are associated right. with the project. And we do know that um, with the unusual weather that we had this season, that there were likely some casualties in some of those plants that were installed. And there's a, there's a certain mortality rate on some new plantings as well. Mm -hmm. um, so come next spring, when the plants come up, um, we're going to have another walkthrough, and we'll go through and take an inventory and see which, which ones were able to survive the winter, which ones came back, and um, then we'll take care of um, replacements at that time. And also so. the uh, small treelets <laughs> in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. They were having a hard time at the beginning. Okay. All right. Um, You're going to keep the path, though, so you can cut through. The decorative stones between the, the two parking lots um, remain, yes. 
Okay. Um, what else can I share with you here? Um, this coming Saturday is our annual Meet the Author event at Wilmette Junior High School. Um, we're hosting Susan Orlean. Um, so I would love to love to invite you all to attend that event. We're really looking forward to it. Um, I'm thrilled about this particular event because I really enjoy Susan Orlean's writing. Um, but this is also a really special book for libraries because it's the library book. And um, it's quite a valentine to um, what happens in libraries. So. Um, I'm really enthused to hear what her talk is, is going to be all about, and I have the pleasure of getting to introduce her. So, Can you uh, tell us some more about how you landed her? That's such a coup. I'm in the middle of it now. It's such a coup. Um, I have to say that is our adult services department, yes. and that's their brand. We've got a committee yeah, that, um, that develops all these author events, and we have had a host of amazing authors yeah. come through this library over the years. So, that's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. They're brilliant. They don't take no for an answer. <laughs> Before, right. And is there like a, I mean, a... I assume we paid like some reasonable fee or something for an author of that caliber. It's it's all within all within our, our established budget for it, and I would say it is not an exorbitant fee at all, considering you know. How no, popular, she's awesome. You know, yeah. I'm just I'm impressed. Yep. Prior to our one book program, NSLS, the North Suburban Library System, ran an author series, hmm. which brought in nationally recognized authors and again did not pay an exorbitant amount. Edward Albee was among the Is that right? Um, uh, oh, I'm drawing a, uh, the Chilean, uh, Chilean author Isabel, Isabel Lynn. Oh, yeah. uh, was among them. Uh, we had prominent authors eager to come. Mm. Um, Will Matt has a lot of authors resident here. And this library is very much recognized for the fact that we are in a community of readers. So it's considered um, a, a recognition of their achievement that they would be invited to come here and speak. So. It's, it's a mutually beneficial situation. But also the bookstall has been very helpful oh, yes. uh, in anymore. terms of making connections recently right. yeah, sure. in yeah, the past sure. couple, so mm -hmm. giving them their props too. Yeah. Cool. But once you get accepted in the literary community at that level, uh, other authors watch and the invitations are well received. Cool. Okay. All right. So hope to see you on Saturday. A um, couple other events that took place this um, earlier this month. Um, we, we are continuing with our, with our Apollo 50 program on uh, Friday, October 4th. We had over 30 attendees go up to uh, Northwestern to tour the uh, Dearborn Observatory. Um, that was featured on social media and, and was a really popular event for us. Uh, the following day on October 5th, we held our book club open house. Um, again, to give credit to the bookstall, they came and they did a bit of book buzz um, on some titles that would be good for book groups. Um, it was a, a popular event. Again, 30-some folks attended that um, open house event. That very same day, we debuted our Maker Lab programming, and that was the official launch of our 3D printer. And in your report, you can see um, one of our participants there who um, was able to uh, print something at that event. So we're, we're thrilled about that. Um, our 3D printing committee is, is um, fast at work um, trying to create some programs around this and uh, to help promote this new service that we're offering. So we're all really excited about that. Um, coming up next week as well, um, and you may have seen some of the signs when you were coming in today, um, our catalog consortium, CCS, is going to be welcoming a new member, the Indian Trails Public Library based in Wheeling. Um, is going to be joining our system, and as you may recall, when Morton Grove joined our system um, earlier this year, there's a little bit of downtime that's associated with the catalog uh, migration. So um, we're encouraging patrons to bring their library cards when they come to the library over the course of um, the weekend. So uh, between the 19th and the 21st, the catalog will be offline. Uh, librarians will still have the ability to access a snapshot version of 
um, of the catalog. However, it will not get updated with current facts. So, you know, over the course of the three days, if something says it's on shelf, it may not be. It could have been checked out. If something said that it's checked out, it could have been returned by then. Um, staff will not be checking items in because they cannot check items in when the system's down while they can check items out to you. Um, so I just wanted you to be aware of that. That will be a little bit more work on the staff's part, particularly once the system comes back up and we've got a lot of backlog of, of materials to check in. Um, but we're really excited to welcome Indian Trails. They've got a vibrant collection and uh, they're a really awesome library. So we're, we're thrilled about that. Um, a couple points about facilities I wanted to share. Um, facilities associate Mark Ross has painted all the exterior stucco portions of the building. Um, can't really tell by night, but when you see it during the day, um, the building really shines. Um, some of those dull drab parts of stucco on the, on the fascia, particularly on the west and north sides, are, are really looking nice these days. Um, our assistant manager of facilities, Rick Merrill, uh, winterized the grounds and removed all the temporary irrigation equipment and uh, cones and whatnot that were out there so that makes the grounds look um, um, more